Today in this video, we're going to show you how to set up a leak detection function on your Profilux 4 controller using the GHL Connect app. For this setup, you will need a GHL leak interface, one or more GHL leak sensor, and an available level port on your Profilux. If you're planning to connect two separate level sensor accessories to a single level port, you'll also need a PLLY splitter cable. To get started, Connect the leak interface to your Profilux controller. Take the cable that is included with the leak interface and connect it to the controller's level port. Connect the other end of that cable to the leak interface. Once connected, place the interface away from any splashing water and excess humidity. For those using a PLLY splitter cable, connect the tail end of the splitter directly to the level port. Then connect the leak interface to one of the Y ends of that cable. Be sure to take note what color port on the P4 you have the leak interface or splitter cable connected to. If you have it connected to the purple port, it is connected to level inputs 1 and 2. If it is connected to the green port, it is connected to inputs 3 and 4. If you are connecting the leak interface directly to a level port, Please note that the numbering for this sensor will automatically be assigned to the first level sensor number of that port. In other words, if you were to connect a leak interface directly to level port 1 and 2, it would automatically be assigned as sensor number 1. If you connect a leak interface directly to level port 3 and 4, it would automatically be assigned as sensor number 3. If you are using a splitter cable, the level sensor numbering will automatically be assigned to the first and second number of that level port. For example, connecting two leak interfaces to the level 1 and 2 port would make one end of the splitter cable level sensor 1 and the other end level sensor number 2. When you connect the leak interface to the P4 for the first time, you'll notice a red light turn on. This red light only turns on when there is either no leak sensor connected or if the connected sensor detects conductive water. With the leak interface connected, it's time to connect the leak sensors. Take the cable that came with the leak sensor and connect one end to the sensor and the other end to the leak interface. If you have multiple leak sensors, feel free to either DZ chain one sensor off of another or simply connect the other sensor to the second port of the leak interface. The more leak sensors you have connected to the interface, the larger the detection area will be. Together, all these sensors will react as a single unit. If one or more sensor in this chain detects conductive water, the leakage detection function will trigger an alarm and shut down any assigned pumps. When installing these sensors, make sure all the cables are fully inserted into the connector ports. Also make sure the sensors are placed in an area that is free from any salt crystals or conductive water. If necessary, wipe the area clean to make sure the sensors are resting on a clean surface. If the sensors are installed correctly, the red light on the leak interface will turn off. If your leak interface light is still on, please check the connection of all your cables and check the placement of each sensor. Now that both the leak interface and leak sensors are connected, it's time to set up the leakage detection function on your P4. Open up the GHL Connect app and connect to your Profilux. From the dashboard, press the menu icon. Select Control, then select Level. Choose an unused control circuit. In the General Settings section, set the operation mode to Leakage Detection. Next, type in a description for this task. Once that's done, choose if you'd like to have the Reset Error Automatically feature enabled or disabled. By enabling this feature, the alarm will automatically reset itself once all the leak sensors detect normal operating conditions. If you choose to leave this feature disabled, the alarm will remain active even after a leak detection incident. In this case, the P4 will wait for you to manually reset the alarm. The next step will be to select the sensor that will be used for this function. For example, if you have the leak interface connected directly to the level 1 and 2 port, select 1. If you have it connected directly to the level 3 and 4 port, select 3. If you are using a splitter cable, select the sensor number based on what level port you have the splitter connected to. Once that's done, 
Press Save, then press the back arrow icon at the top left of your screen. Your leakage detection function is now set up. If you wish to take it a step further and also shut off certain pumps in case of a leak, you can do so by assigning this leak function to any power bar socket. To do that, press the menu icon. Press the back arrow, then select Switch Channels. Select the socket that you want reacting to this leak function. Type in a description for this socket. Set the function to Fill Water. The number here corresponds to the control circuit number you used when you created the leakage detection function. For example, since we used control circuit number 1, we would select 1. If we had used control circuit number 2, we would have selected 2. Once that's done, press Save. The assigned outlet will now stay on by default. If one or more leak sensors detect conductive water, the assigned socket will turn off and an alarm will be triggered. If you would like to have more than one power bar socket react to this leak function, simply select the other socket and assign the leak function to that socket. In some scenarios, you may already have a function assigned to the pump you want reacting to the leak function. For example, if you already had a feed pause function assigned to your skimmer, but also want to have the skimmer shut off if the collection cup gets full, you will need to assign two functions to a single power bar outlet. This can be done with the use of programmable logic functions. Here's how to do that. Press the menu icon and select Programmable Logic. Select an unused gate. Set the function to AND, then set input 1 to the original function you had assigned to the socket. For example, if you currently have a skimmer on socket 5 with a feed pause already assigned, this programmable logic input 1 should be set to filter. For input 2, set the function to fill water and select the control circuit number you used when you created the leakage detection function. Since we made the function on control circuit number 1, we would select fill water 1. Press save once you're done. You've now created a programmable logic function that contains two separate functions. The last step will be to assign this PL function to the desired socket. Press the back arrow at the top left, press the menu icon, then select Switch Channels. Select the desired socket, then assign this socket to the programmable logic function. Select the gate number you used when you created the PL function. Since we made the function on gate 1, we would set the socket to programmable logic 1. If we had made the PL function on gate 2, we would select 2. Add a description, then press save. That covers the leakage detection install and setup video. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this video or any GHL product, feel free to contact us on any one of our support channels. We've placed links and contact info in the description box below. Until next time folks, take care.